Is this someone who always hammers on submission, submission, even from the relationship? He's asking you to submit, subject your will, suppress everything you're supposed to do. Once you see such a man, pick your two slippers and run away. Run away. If you see someone like that and still marry the person, the soup that you use your hand to cook, you will finish it. Anyways, let's get into today's topic. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dupe and I'm a lifestyle and faith blogger from Nigeria. So you're going to be seeing content about the Christian faith and lifestyle on this channel. Please subscribe if you have not. Subscribe to my channel, please. We are trying to grow here. And then give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it at the end of the day. And leave your comments in the comment section below. Whatever you think, leave it there. Thank you. So as you can see from the topic of today, I'm going to be talking about something that has become such a sensitive word in this generation something that has become such a dreaded word something you dare not talk about in our generation you know we live in a generation where everybody is trying to be woke everybody is trying to talk so little experience so little knowledge but so much to say yes so i'm going to be talking about submission as you can see from the topic why should i submit to my husband let me put this disclaimer out there first of all that number one i am not a pastor number two i'm not a marriage or relationship expert number three i am an unmarried christian so everything you're going to be seeing in this video everything i'm going to be saying in this video are my thoughts inspired of course by the holy spirit and by the word of god amen amen so today I just want to let out my thoughts and then I want to hear what you guys have to say about the submission thing because I don't get how something that is so innocent that is meant to be for our own good has been misconstrued so much that you dare not talk about it now in public. I mean, you dare not talk about submission. Feminists will hack you down. At least the feminists of this generation, like what they what they define feminists to be, what they think feminism is about. They are going to come for you. you dare not, there are certain things you don't even see in this our generation. You cannot come out and say certain things that are plainly written in the Bible, that are plainly what God wants us to do. You cannot come out and say, who are you? They are going to drag you on social media. It's so sad. Wait, let me go and drink water. So, like I was saying, submission has become such a dreaded word in our generation nobody wants to <clears throat> nobody wants to submit nobody wants to even hear of it why what is the meaning of that like what are you talking about why should i submit and the simple answer to that question is because that is what god wants i mean i understand it when unbelievers or people who are not into god like that who do not believe in christ who, when they say things like they will not submit, when they fight against submission, when they fight against certain things that God has laid down in marriage, I understand. But as a believer, why should you submit as a woman? As Yes, as a woman, why should you submit? The simple answer is because that is what God wants you to do. It's very, very simple. Like submission is not an easy thing. It's not. It's not something that anybody wants to do. Nobody wants to subjects themselves nobody wants to yield and then put their strength under control but because of the need for um organization for a system there has to be like a hierarchy everybody two captains cannot be in one boat do you understand two people cannot be leading there is a need for organization there is a need for a system there is a need for an arrangement an organogram and if god has said okay let the husband be the head of the home do you trust in the wisdom of god enough for you to accept that arrangement because to be honest there are many things god will ask you to do many things that god will say okay let it be done this way but to the human mind, it's going to look foolish. Like, what is the meaning of this? What kind of plan is this? What's, what are you doing? God, what kind of instruction is this? But do you trust in the wisdom of God enough to submit because he says so? 
this video is likely going to be a very short one because i just have very few things to say the thing is if you trust in the wisdom of god there are so many things that you god will ask you to do that god will design to be a particular way but when as human beings we feel like we know so much it's so amazing how human beings that god formed out of dust and breathed life into now think they know more than god it's so amazing like it's so funny do you trust in the wisdom of God enough so much that when he says, do this this way, let this be arranged this way. This is my original arrangement. Let things be like this. Do you trust him enough to, okay, this is what God has said. Lord, give me the strength to do it. Give me the grace to do it. Instead of trying to fight what he said, instead of trying to fight his original arrangement and ask, ah, why do you have to do things like this? Why do things have to be like this? Why should I submit? Why should a woman submit? I mean, like, <laughs> it's so funny. It's really funny. I understand people's bias because submission has been bastardized and a lot of people with lack of knowledge, a lot of religious men that do not really know anything, all they know is submit, try to suppress their wives. Submission is not suppression. That is why, like I said, I'm, a, I'm an unmarried, so a lot of things I'll be saying now applies to unmarried Christian ladies. That is why the greatest favor you can do for yourself as a woman who is not married, is to sit down and select. Forget to be choosy. This is someone you're going to spend the rest of your life with. If you ignore red signs, <laughs> don't come out and start wailing later in the future. The best thing you can do for yourself is to look at the person very well. What does this man believe in? Is this a man that understands that the same Bible that says, Wife, submit to your husband. It's the same Bible that says submitting one to another in love. I mean, people don't talk about the scripture a lot, but the Bible is right there in the Bible. The same apostle Paul, when he was preaching, right, his letter to the Corinthians, he said submitting one to another. One of love. the greatest things you can do for yourself is to understand a man's mindset, understand his thinking pattern, his paradigm. Because it's out of the abundance of the heart, from his mind, that's how he will act. So is he someone who understands that the Bible said submit, wives should submit. But there is also a place for submitting one to another. Submission is putting your strength under control. There are times the husband will have to put his strength under control. Does he understand this? Does he understand that there are times that it's not like the fact that the wife is asked to submit does not mean the man's will will have to prevail all the time. He has become a lord. He's now a dictator. No. The Bible that says that wives should submit says husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church that he gave his life for it. In fact, a man that really wants to do what the Bible has said we won't be scared of these things. You'll be scared of this submission and love thing because the, as the wife is expected to submit, the husband is expected to love his wife to the point of death. He says, husbands. If you're not a husband, pass that verse. But he says, husbands, love your wives. Not the way you want. He knows the way you want is very, it vacillates. So he first separates you from your feeling and says, as Christ, love the church. If you understood that scripture, you should start crying. Because no man can love a woman like that. It is not given to a man to love his wife as Christ loves the church. There are many things that that statement alone will cancel out of your marriage. Number one, that true love can never be a reward. You cannot reward someone with love. The saints were not rewarded with salvation. You see how difficult it is so the kind of hair she makes or doesn't make has nothing to do with it where do you then keep your emotions you see how hard it is that verse is supposed to make you go back and say God how do I do it the fact that you did not ask him is proof you did not understand the scripture As Christ loved the church, go and read the halotry and the rebellion of the church. I have loved thee with an everlasting love, and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. I'm not ashamed to be vulnerable. I am God, but let heaven say whatever, I will still come for you. And he says, Love her that way. So before you love her that way, 
you have to get the mind of the person whose model was given to you so the bible says let this mind be in you as a marriage requirement to not just let it be in you which was also in christ jesus that although he was god he thought it not robbery and he came and not only died died a controversial death so marriage for you becomes a project between you and your wife to outdo loving one another never expecting reception now this is does he understand this look at when god used goma goma and her husband god what was the name of this prophet in the bible the prophet in the bible that god made to act out his relationship with the israelites look at how this woman kept rebelling this woman kept going back to her dorm and god god kept asking the prophet to go back and take his wife and love her go back and take his wife and love her any man that really understands this thing will know that it's almost it's very difficult unless with the help of god you cannot love your wife as Christ loved the church. Ignoring all her flaws. Imagine the kind of things that we do as the bride of Christ. All kinds of things. But Christ still loves us so much to the point of dying for us. And even after that, he keeps forgiving us. His blood has made atonement for us. So if you marry a man with the mindset of, okay, she's her, the instruction to her is to submit. The instruction to me is to love as Christ loved the church. In fact, the submission... There was no comparison for the submission. They just said submit. But the husband, they gave him a standard to meet. As Christ loved the church. Is that not something to be scared of? So it is really important to know that, okay, as a believer, there's no point fighting this thing. Oh, submit. I'm not submitting. Oh, feminist. Oh, woke. Oh, this. All of these things are unnecessary, to be honest. To be honest. It is... You have the greatest, greatest opportunity if you are a single person now. If people who are married, I understand when they talk about these things because maybe they're already in the marriage and the husband is somebody who is very, who is not very sensible. It's difficult to submit to somebody who lacks wisdom. It's going to be hard. A different level of wisdom. God will need to give the woman a different level of wisdom to handle that situation. But if you are unmarried now and you're not looking out looking out for the important things like this man's mindset. Is this someone who will just expect me to be suppressed? Submission is not suppression. Is this someone who will just suppress me? I mean, all through scriptures, we see powerful women, women who are who were even more powerful than men in the Bible. Look at the likes of Deborah. Women who could do great things. Why didn't God stop them? God used them mightily. He knows that. He knows what he has put in the woman. The woman is not in any way inferior. But he has given you an instruction. He said, submit to your husband. Another thing I would like to talk about is the fact that there are men who this submission thing is really shaking their head. They've taken it so far that they expect every woman to submit to them. What did the Bible say? It says, wives, submit to your own husband, your own there are men who expect every woman to submit to them. That is not derived from the Bible. That is not of God. Submit to your own husband. So I cannot be in the office and because you're a man, you expect me to be submitting to you or subjecting myself under you. For what? That is not what the Bible says. That is not what we've been asked to do. That is not what God designed it to be. There are men who would not respect their bosses because she's a woman. Why is she there? Why is she talking to me like this? Once you see such a man, pick your two slippers and run away. Run away. Submission is for your husband, not for all the men. God has not made women to be subjected, to be inferior. He has not called you to be someone who cannot live out your purpose in life. No. So the best thing you can, I'll keep saying this, the best thing you can do for yourself now is to understand a man's mindset before you marry him. Understand how he thinks. Understand his outlook to life, his values, how he sees some of these things, how he interprets some of these things. Is he someone who expects every woman to submit to him? Is he someone who is not interested in love your wife as Christ loved the church, but he's interested in wife submit to your husband? Is he someone who always hammers on submission, submission, even from the relationship? He's asking you to submit, subject your will, suppress everything you're supposed to do. And you still go into the marriage. If you see someone like that and still marry the person, you have nothing to say because once you are married to that person, God expects you to submit to that person. So the soup that you use your hand to cook, you will finish it. 
so these are some of my random thoughts i was just thinking about these things and i thought to share if you're a christian please let me hear what you think in the comments below what do you think about this submission thing is it something so terrible because <clears throat> There was a time recently that um, Pastor Adeboe came out to talk about his wife, how she does certain things for him. She still cooks for him. She still does his nails, I think his fingernails and his toenails and stuff. And people attacked him. A generation that has the highest rate of divorce attacking people who have lasted in marriage. Now, I understand. Some people are saying the fact that they lasted in marriage doesn't mean that they enjoy, enjoyed the marriage. Maybe the woman endured the marriage. Not everybody is enduring marriage. And sacrifice is part of love. It's part of marriage. It's part of a relationship. If you cannot sacrifice sometimes, if you cannot put down your will sometimes, people did not see where... Pastor Adeboye said he irons her clothes. He irons his clothes and her clothes. They will turn a blind eye to that one. But once a woman is mentioned, we become very sensitive. We become very touchy. Unnecessarily touchy and sensitive. In fact, I'm tired of this discussion. But at the end of the day, balance is required balance is required it is not the will of god for anybody to be suppressed anybody who is trying to suppress you and manipulate you is not of god is witchcraft god is not trying to subject anybody to suppress anybody the bible says that in christ there is no jew or gentile there is no male or female that scripture alone should make you know that we are all one before god if the bible says relate the woman as with the weaker vessel weaker meaning somebody is weak the man himself is weak we are all weak under god but for the sake of organization, for the sake of an organogram, for some, for, for the sake of, I cannot find the English word, but you get what I mean. Somebody has to be made the head. That doesn't make the second person less important. It just means that they are, that is how God wants it to be. And like I said, if you trust in the wisdom of God, you trust that he's an all-knowing God. He doesn't give any instruction. He doesn't give make design things just anyhow. He has a reason for it. Then it won't be so hard to follow this instruction. Thank you so much if you watched this video till this point. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the submission thing like is it as it is it something so bad the way our generation is portraying it is it as, as bad as our generation is portraying it is it that terrible is it something that should not be talked about let me hear what you think in the comments below whether you're a man or you're a woman let me hear what you think thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video goodbye Please ignore any noise you may have heard or any light issue. The light has been fluctuating and everything. Going back to Hordom. And God... God, what kind of thing is this? See, eh? Everything. Everything today is fighting against this video. My lighting, my sound, these noise makers around me. I'm tired. But we must film this video today. We must film this video. Please ignore any noise you must have heard in the video. I beg. I'm trying my best.